We live in a plastic epidemic. So far, we've produced 8.3 billion tons of plastic, creating islands of garbage, mountains of garbage, and rivers of garbage. To think that we recycle most of this plastic is a fallacy. We need to do something about the mess we've made. But what? What if the answer was microbes? More specifically, plastic-eating bacteria? It's not a stretch. I mean, there's one bacterium, Alcanivorax, and it was found eating wood at the Gulf of Mexico oil spill of 2010. And Pseudomonas was found consuming polyurethane at a garbage dump. And then there's Idionella psychiasis. This bacterium was found consuming PET plastic. What do all these bacteria have in common? Well, they're all rod-shaped, use a polyflagellum to move, and they need oxygen to survive. And they're also gram-negative, so there's less peptidic lichen. But let's focus on Idionella psychiasis. How does this bacteria eat plastic? First, we gotta understand what PET plastic even is. It's a lightweight plastic, commonly used for water bottles, and it has many units of ethylene terephthalate. Now, Idionella psychiasis has these two enzymes, PET hydrolase and MHETase, to break them down. Using hydrolysis, PET hydrolase degrades it back into ethylene terephthalate and hydroxyethyl terephthalic acid, let's call it MHET. From there, the MHET is degraded even further into terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol. This is pretty notable because most recycling technology doesn't fully break the plastic back into its initial monomers. Just think about it. It takes 450 years for a plastic water bottle to decompose on its own. And yet, one French company changed these enzymes so that they could decompose plastic in just 10 hours. Researchers from the UK also changed this process so it wouldn't have to be done at 70 degrees Celsius. That's not to say there aren't challenges. Indianella psychiasis is not resilient in aquatic environments, where a lot of this plastic is. But we can remove plasmids of the PTH gene and insert it into a marine bacterium like Vibrio fischeri. Also, there are toxins that may be released during this process. And the monomers terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol, they're not particularly safe. Perhaps, using controlled environments, we can safely degrade the plastic into these monomers. But it might be a better idea to break it down even further into hydrogen and carbon. Because why use the monomers again? Recycling helps a little, but ultimately, we have to find ways to stop using so much plastic. So we need that extra step. Well, we're getting there, and that's what matters. Because those plastics that were produced, you know, starting from 1907, they're still here today. So let's be wary about our choices.